Hey, in this series of movies, I'll be showing some advanced controls on DMG Audio's Dynamics plugin Compassion to help you get to grips with just how much is available under the hood for shaping and sculpting sounds. I've got a session here that needs mixing, so I'm going to process some tracks from this to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to start with the beats then. They've got quite a nice chunk to them, but could obviously do with some fattening up, and could be a fair bit punchier too. So if I bring down the threshold and raise the ratio, we can apply some compression. Straight away, you get the main problem with compressing all your drums together like this, which is that it's totally dominated by the kick, which is now being completely squashed, whilst the other parts aren't getting much of a look in. And this also means there's no bass now too, so the kick's lost all of its impact. The standard way of tackling this on a lot of compressors is to roll off the bass in the sidechain signal. To do this with compassion, we need to expand the advanced controls area at the bottom, and then if I double click the sidechain EQ section, we can see all those controls. And can then turn sidechain EQ on and use the display to roll off the bass, so that part of the signal doesn't trigger the compressor anymore, which will lessen the extent to which the bass is reduced. Compassion has quite a few other methods for approaching this issue though, including adjusting of the compressor curve and various frequency dependent compression alternatives. We'll start by looking at curve adjustment, which we do using the controls in the threshold section. In there, you've got several options for changing the behaviour of the compressor, including bleed, which increases the compression more and more the higher the signal goes over the threshold, as you can see by the compressor curve changing there. And also a hysteresis control which is more useful when using Compassion as a gate, as it prevents chatter. And then there's Ceiling, which is what we're going to use now. With Ceiling, you can basically set an upper threshold, where compression stops, which results in levels above that point not being compressed. This can work well if you have a signal where a much louder peak is occurring, but you don't want this to dominate the compression as much, which is pretty much what's going on in this case. As I bring down the Ceiling, you can see the curve changing to reflect it. So above the threshold, we get compression occurring, according to how high our ratio is, and then above our ceiling, there's no compression, so the input equals output. A good way of setting this amount is to observe the gain reduction meter, and then lower the ceiling until you see a reduction. I often find about 6 or 7 dB is a nice amount, but it depends what you're compressing of course. Another issue when compressing drums can be how fast to set the attack time. Making the attack really fast will mean the compressor acts very quickly on transients, which has the advantage of getting complete control over the level, but at the detriment of losing the punch. It's important to have some bass rolled off with the sidechain EQ if the compressor is this fast by the way, so we don't get any distortion occurring. So some of the ways I would now set about to bring back some punchiness would be to first try the attack type. This control can have a really nice effect on some sounds, but doesn't do a lot on these drums. So another control to try is the RMS amount in the global parameters. Which basically slows down the compressor though, so it's similar to changing the attack and release times themselves. And if you have some makeup gain applied, then this may lead to signal overloads. But clipping can be prevented using the section alongside, which is a great one for drums. If I open up that by clicking on the up arrow, you can see in there we've got all the controls for the transient shaper and clip limiter. If I activate the transient shaper then, we can increase the attack to add some punch. You need to be careful when doing this though, especially when there's a makeup gain boost. It can be quite hard to prevent clipping using this facility alone, which is why you have the clip limiter directly below, 
to stop the signal overloading. So now I can play around with the amount to get the punchiness I want, and maybe try some sustain too, which will beef up the main part of the drum's waveforms. The durations of these sections can also be tailored to suit the signal too. I tend to be fairly gentle with the transient shaping, as the effect can be quite extreme. You can hear there's now quite a dramatic effect on the drum's envelopes if I turn the shaper on and off. we're getting a nice fat sound now. And another control that can be great on drums in here is the driver mount. You can hear if I increase that how the drums get seriously fattened up. You don't want to go too overboard with this though as it will undo most of the transient shaping. So that's one example of how to use compassion to compress a drum break. In the next movie, I'll show you some different methods that employ the EQ section.